I can't imagine that I'm the only one that had a little bit of trouble trying to get emotionally engaged and involved in SmackDown this week. Like coming right off of the heels of all those releases, that release again, whatever the hell you want to call it. I found myself caring less, honestly. I never understand why WWE goes to these lengths to release as many wrestlers as they can at a time. Like, you almost feel like you'd be better off spreading it out over a couple of months, releasing one or two at a time, and it kind of gets buried and doesn't really stand out very much. Like, they take the opposite approach. Let's go get as much bad PR for ourselves as we possibly can. And all the while, make moves that make absolutely no fucking sense. But here we are. Um, but yeah, it helped this week that you actually got to see the Tribal Chief in all of his resplendent glory. That's only but so much you could do with this show. The opening segment with the bloodline and then eventually the interruption by the New Day was great. You know, Xavier Woods wants to keep talking that shift and tiptoeing to the tribal chief, the head of the table, help him smell the fucking roses, take that scepter and shove it where the sun don't shine, which he'll then probably take back and use as yet another technique on page. But the whole concept of this opening segment was to set up the big match which was going to be Xavier Woods versus Jimmy Uso in the main event and I also love too how Roman during the backstage segment that was a little bit later on he was saying I took a vacation I took one week off and Smackdown sucked it did it was almost as bad as Raw eh, I don't want to go that far but the point remains And I love how he's clowning on Jimmy when Jimmy was laughing about it. It ain't funny. You're right, Roman. It ain't funny. Jimmy's probably drunk. Anyways. um, So that stuff was good, but like Naomi versus Shayna Baszler. Again. Because of this whole shit with Sonya Deville. Again. No, I'm not into it. No, I'm not going to let the story fucking play out. Anybody that says that now about this company is goddamn stupid. And disconnected from reality and delusional and all that shit. This feels much more like it's just designed to get heel heat on Sonya Deville than it is to actually get Naomi over. Now you're doing everything they can, it seems like, just to make her stupid. And there's so many different talents you could do this with. Like if you told me you were doing this with a Liv Morgan, I would 100% understand that. I could be like, you know what, I buy that. But Naomi is unnecessary. She deserves better. And instead you get this bullshit. It's stupid. And speaking of bullshit, the shitsy heel turn. I'm not saying that she came across poorly in her interview. I'm not even saying technically that the heel turn itself was executed poorly last week on SmackDown. I can't really say that. What I can say though, there was no fucking reason to do it. Your audience had just become a little bit invested in Shotzi. To the point where, you know, people liked her. They wanted to see her. You have the tank thing, which has gotten over. And give them a little bit of time and you can get them really emotionally invested in the character. So you just fucking flip her heel. And it feels like it's absolutely not for the benefit of her. That is for the benefit of Sasha Banks. So Sasha Banks has somebody to work with. Which that means Sasha Banks is working as a baby face, which is always booty cheeks. So nobody fucking wins. Like, why do this to Shitsy? This makes no goddamn sense. If this was a year down the road, and you need somebody on that heel side of the fence, if you had kind of run your course with Shitsy, I would understand. You haven't, though. You haven't done any of that. So why fucking go there? We know why. It's the fucking Al Davis mindset of Vince McMahon. He don't know what the fuck he's doing anymore. And, like, you look at another example of why in the fuck would you get emotionally invested in these characters. You got... Angel Garza and Umberto Carrillo against Cesaro and Mansoor. It wasn't Mansoor just beating damn Mustafa Ali a couple of damn times. And correct me if I'm wrong here. Was it this year at WrestleMania that Cesaro beat Seth Rollins? Now you're in November. Less than eight months later. And Cesaro is jobbing out. In this fucking match. To what? Set up a tag team that you're probably releasing one or both of these guys in three to six months any goddamn ways? Again, why should people get engaged and involved and invested in any of these damn characters 
when none of it fucking matters, none of it makes any sense, and everything is just so goddamn random. There was a sneaky good segment in here with Drew McIntyre's open challenge and it being answered by Ricochet. Now look, Ricochet ain't great on the mic. We all know that. But there is a little bit of a vibe there. But you've got kind of that smarmy ass heel that if you unleashed it, you could actually make Ricochet interesting. Is even in the ring. He could do some really cool stuff, yes, but so can a lot of other people. So what's your point? There's nothing different about him. But man, there is potential there. But you absolutely cannot trust the WWE to do anything to unleash that, even if they wanted to. But this match between him and Drew McIntyre was solid. Get in, get out, and surely they're just building up Drew so he could eventually take the strap from Roman. You can fucking see it coming. Um, but again, when you talk about, and this is a common theme, why would you get invested in the characters? Why would you get invested in the characters if you know they could be here today and released tomorrow? Am I right? We know I'm right. Why get invested in somebody like a Cesaro when on the one hand he's going to be winning a marquee match at WrestleMania and then several months later he's part of a team that's jobbing out to a random fucking tag team on SmackDown? Why would you care? Why would you get behind a shitsy Blackheart when you're just going to split her up from Tegan for no damn reason just so that way you can turn her heel for no goddamn reason? And then you look at what happened here with Happy Baron Corbin. You took a character that had a chance to establish some real depth, some real purpose, some real ability to connect with the audience and for the audience to connect with him on a meaningful, meaningful way. And instead you undercut it the first fucking chance you had. And now it's just basically a new spin on Baron Corbin being back to as worthless as he always has been. And the whole shit with the Viking Raiders, man, this was totally fucking random. Hell, and of all the damn teams, like, oh, God. And then the match between them, just so that way you could have the Viking Raiders win via countout. No, hard pass. I'm good on all this shit. And yet, another example of fuck you, WWE, for ruining bum-ass Broke Baron Corbin. You could have had something special there, but you just couldn't fucking help yourself. And there is nobody in that company that can defend this. There is nobody in the company that can justify, excuse, or spin this. There is no, wait until your story plays out. Fuck your story. Pound it up your ass. Because there isn't one. And it was really tough to see Hit Row without BFAB. If you were going to release her, then wouldn't you release her before you brought the whole group up as an entire unit to SmackDown? If you actually had plans to release her, wouldn't you have done that before you reportedly had just given her a main roster contract? Like, people need to stop confusing some of the current financial success of WWE based off of their extreme cost-cutting measures, the blood money deals with Saudi Arabia and so forth, and look at the real mechanisms, the real inner workings here, and see that this is a disjointed clusterfuck of a company right now. That makes absolutely no goddamn sense they would release somebody like BFAB like that. And if you had patterns and designs on doing that, then you wouldn't have brought her up to the main roster to debut. Why the hell would you do that? But knowing this company, they just totally act like, eh, the fans won't fucking know. They won't care. So we'll just go out there and keep on doing it. We won't even acknowledge it. Like, what the fuck? Bring back BFAB. There is no real justifiable reason. Even if you want to go down the path of, oh, she wasn't vaccinated. You really want to go there? You really think in a company full of right-wingers like WWE that she, Nia Jax, Karrion Cross are the only fucking ones? Like, that's where that whole story makes no goddamn sense. None. Sasha Banks, we know isn't reportedly. It's a key caveat to throw on there, but with social media activity and so forth, it's pretty likely to say that she's not vaccinated. So why the fuck does Sasha Banks still have a job? I'm not advocating for Sasha Banks to be fired. I am pointing out the hypocrisy of that idea of several of these talents were released due to vaccination status, or at least that was one part of it. That doesn't make any fucking sense. And the BFAB thing, again, doesn't make any fucking sense. Why would you bring somebody into your developmental, have them work through developmental as part of a group, then make a big deal out of said group that you're bringing up from developmental 
to your main roster, and then you cut a bitch like less than two weeks later. There is no planning here. It's just picking random names out of a hat. Why in the hell again would the fans care? Why in the hell would any wrestlers want to go work for WWE? What the hell's wrong with you at this point? Finally, you get to the main event was King Xavier Woods versus Jimmy Uso. Stipulation was if Jimmy Uso lost, he would have to get on one knee to salute his King Xavier Woods. Like the stipulation, like the match. It wasn't enough going to be going to be enough to save this show. And again, admittedly, as you can probably tell by my ten tenor here, that it's not a not a show I was going to enjoy pretty much no matter what. But I enjoyed that end when Roman Reigns came and said, "Smack, bitch." You want to be a king, I'll show you a fucking king. I will say, admittedly, I like Xavier Woods. He's a good talent. He's one of the most over talents you have in the company. Whether you as a fan like the New Day shtick, you like them, doesn't matter. There are certain just objective truths here. And the objective truth is, is that the New Day as a group, as an act, is one of the most over things that this company has. And I hope we're at a place where everybody can agree with that. You can say, I fucking hate them. They annoy the shit out of me. I think it's stupid. They act all types of suspect. Oh, that's true. Or you can talk about all the good things. But either way, you should be able to acknowledge that one of the most over acts. That said, though, is this really the path you're going down? Like you're buying time for a Roman Brock rematch? To have Roman go against Xavier Woods? the hell? Maybe you should have spent more time building up a Keith Lee or Karrion Cross, so that way you could have had ready-made opponents in the pipeline for Roman Reigns. I like Xavier Woods, but he should not be sniffing the goddamn Tribal Chief. That's a little ridiculous here. Unless you're setting up a New Day versus Bloodline Survivor Series 3-on-3 match, like winner-take-all type of match, then I can fucks with that and I get down with that. That's fine. But... Yeah. Otherwise, hell no. A hell no. So, like I said, I was already not looking forward to SmackDown because of the shit from the day before. It's just stupid. A good reminder of why the hell should you care about most of these people. Because the company clearly does it. And you saw it as a show. Several things that they do. Like they go out of their way to make you not care about the people that you want to care about or you should care about. It's just fucking stupid and counterproductive and very, very appropriately, typically, WWE.